Hi, I'm Nick Howard and I'm a partner at Empire Engineering. Welcome to Flipchart Friday. Today, I'm going to be talking about rainflow counting. Now, if you've done fatigue analysis, you're probably familiar with the term rainflow counting, but perhaps not so familiar with exactly what's going on behind the scenes. Often, it's a bit of a black box where we put numbers in, the computer churns away and spits numbers out. So hopefully today I can shine a bit of light on the process and what's going on. When performing a fatigue calculation, you're almost always dealing with a stress time history that's come from some analysis software. And the tool you're going to be using to perform your fatigue analysis is an SN curve. Now the S there stands for stress and the N stands for number of cycles. The stress part's fairly easy. It's just the, the Y values on a stress time history plot. However, the N is a little harder to extract. You can sort of see there are a number of cycles, but assigning a number to a given stress range is really tricky. Thankfully, this is why we have rainflow counting. Rainflow counting provides an algorithm or a process for being able to interpret a stress time history plot into SN data. The first part of doing this is to convert your stress time history into a very simple zigzag diagram where the peaks and troughs are preserved and all the other information is lost. The next step in the process is to rotate that stress time history by 90 degrees, such that the start of the history is at the top and the end is at the bottom. And in doing this, this is where the rainflow analogy comes in. It now resembles, with a bit of imagination, a pagoda roof. And there are four rules that we're going to apply in order to do the counting. Uh, the first is that the rain starts at the various compression and tension peaks. And then there are three other rules about how the rain flows. So rain either flows uh, down and terminates at the end, or it flows down and terminates when it passes a peak of greater magnitude, or it flows until it's interrupted by a flow from further up. Now that probably doesn't make a huge amount of sense without an example. So I'm going to talk through it now. Starting with the compression peaks, our first bit of rain initiates at point A. So this flows down along this roof, drops off at B, and is terminated here, because we're at C, minus three, greater in magnitude than minus two. Our next bit of rain starts at C, flows down along this roof, falls off D. Now it's not terminated at E, because that's smaller than C. It flows down to here and terminates at G, because minus four, greater in magnitude than minus three. Our next bit of rain starts at E, flows down, drops off this roof, is interrupted, oh no, I lied, falls to here because minus four is greater than minus one. Now, our last uh, peak here, this G flows down and drops off this roof, being terminated at the end. Now, let us do our green tensile peaks. So starting at B, the rain comes down here, falls, drops off here, and is terminated in line with D. Now D starts here, flows down, drops off this roof, lands on this roof, drops off this one, and falls all the way to the floor down here. Now our next one, F, that flows, but is interrupted at this point by the flow that was coming off this roof. And lastly, we start at H, and flow all the way to the bottom here. Now that we've completed that, the next step in the process is to sum it all up. So what we're doing here is counting what are called half cycles and looking at their stress range. So we'll start at the top. Uh, our first one is uh, this A to B, and it has, it goes from minus two to plus one. That's a range of three. So we get a half count in our three box, and just for good bookkeeping, I'll note down the range. A, B. Next we have C, and that flowed to D from minus three to five, that's uh, eight, and that is C to D. The next one is this one, which flowed E to F and dropped off from minus one to plus three, so that's a four, and E to F. And then our next one is this, G to H, which has a range of eight, so another one in the eight box, and that was G to H. Now that's all the orange ones. We then do the same for the green ones. 
So starting here, B to C, uh, plus one to minus three, that is a range of four. So another one in this box and B to C. Next one, this looks like our biggest one. This goes all the way from plus five to dropping off at G minus four. So that's uh, a range of nine. So one in the nine box and D to G, D to G. That's that one. Now we have this one, this little one that was interrupted. This flows from uh, F to E and has a range of four. So we get another one in the four box and this is F to E. That's that. And then our very final one goes from plus four to minus two. So a range of six and that is H to I. And that concludes the process of performing a rainflow count. Now we have the, the number of counts associated with the stress range. That should be noted that these are half cycles. When you plug those into your SN curve, you need to double them such that we get full cycles. If you ever receive any data from someone like this, always question if they're half cycles or full cycles they're working with. Hopefully that's explained how rainflow counting works. Until next time, thank you.